From the station working for you, this is WRTV News at 7, streaming now. Telling their side of the story, two Metro Police officers are ready to put it on the line as they face accusations of excessive force. Thank you for joining us. I'm Amanda Starantino. And I'm Mark Mullins. Tonight, the lawyer for those officers says his clients are victims of a rush to unfair judgment. Officers Jonathan Horlock and Nathaniel Shawwacker both face charges of battery and official misconduct. They were seen on video arresting two women after rioting broke out downtown this past May. The video shows the officers hitting a woman with batons and pepper bullets while another woman was pushed to the ground. A jury recently indicted the officers who appeared in court today. Their lawyer says charges against his clients are driven by what he calls a misguided motive to criminalize legitimate police action. These officers took action that were consistent with their police training and procedures, and more importantly, consistent with the law. But they now find themselves to be targets of a movement that seeks to defund the police and seeks to lock up cops. Attorney John Kautzman applauds IMPD Chief Randall Taylor, saying the chief is letting evidence guide the investigation, not public opinion. The two women have filed a federal lawsuit against the officers, as well as two other officers involved in the arrest. There's now a plan in motion to improve safety in downtown Indianapolis. As the mayor first outlined yesterday, more than $750,000 will be allocated to address ongoing problems, including crime and homelessness. Problems which downtown business owners and residents say are big hurdles. And part of the plan includes more security cameras and more police patrols. But is that enough? Tonight we look at the deeper issues affecting downtown. WRTV's Cornelius Hawker spoke with the head of a nonprofit playing a key role in finding solutions to make the core of the Circle City an appealing and safe place to be. If you ask some people, downtown Indianapolis has seen better days. But downtown Indy Inc., with help from the city and police department, are trying to change that. I talked to Sherry Seiwert, executive director for Downtown Indy Inc., who tells me the overwhelming issue people want to see addressed. Safety was their number one concern because without the, um, the density that we're accustomed to in downtown from um, the workforce as well as convention goers, it feels, um, it feels vacant. Empty streets mean more chances for bad things to happen. It's gotten so bad in front of City Market, they've put up this temporary barrier to try and curb some of the less than desired activity going on, whether that's fighting, using drugs, or even littering. Right now, Downtown Indy Inc. pays for off-duty police officers to patrol downtown. Those patrols are going to increase. We're going to quadruple the number of hours um, and by adding more off-duty officers on bikes. But with all this focus on safety, Sherry doesn't want people to think they're trying to criminalize folks who live on the streets. In fact, she says there's around $7.5 million coming that'll help house 500 people. With that rapid rehousing, um, that that will allow um, uh, homeless folks to be housed for up to 24 months. Omari Heflin, who lives and works downtown, says he's happy to hear about these proposed changes in regards to safety and treating those experiencing homelessness with compassion. Providing different resources, opportunities, uh, housing, shelter, uh, ways for them to work, different things like that to keep them busy. Omari believes a balanced approach to solving the issues in downtown is what will provide a lasting change. If you want to increase foot traffic or bikes or police officers, that's fine. But what is the result of that actually being there? Are more people just going to get locked up or are people are actually going to get help? That's the balancing act Sherry is doing right now. Addressing the immediate safety issues and concerns, hoping this is another step in creating a better downtown for everyone. Working for you, Cornelius Hawker, WRTV. Downtown Indy Inc. also plans to add 150 security cameras around downtown along with creating a safety patrol program. That includes that program includes a team of unarmed people to help with issues that may arise. They would also radio IMPD for help if police are needed. Kyle. The sun continuing to shine here on our Thursday had just a few clouds out there earlier today, but those have faded away out there. Sets us up for a very nice sunset that will happen here just after 830 temperature wise still in the 80s in Lafayette at 81. It's 82 in Peru and 83 in Connersville while we're sitting at 78 in Indianapolis. High pressure is still influencing our weather, but this area of rain over eastern portions of Kentucky is actually going to come back our direction as we go through the next couple of days. This evening, though, some very 
very nice weather for you. We've got those clear skies and near perfect conditions. Our temperature is 73 degrees at 9 o'clock. Coming up, we're going to be talking about a little more humidity for Friday, rain chances this weekend, and that summer heat next week. Continuing coverage of the coronavirus and its impact on Indiana, the state health department reports 11 more COVID-19 deaths. 2,979 Hoosiers have now died from coronavirus, and more than 83,000 Hoosiers have tested positive for the virus. More than 945,000 people have been tested in Indiana, with 8.8% testing positive. The COVID-19 pandemic is taking a toll on all of us, but the American Diabetes Association says certain groups are hit especially hard, and that's why the organization is now taking a stand, creating a Health Equity Bill of Rights. The statistics are shocking. 122 million Americans are living with diabetes and prediabetes, and those people are at higher risk for developing complications if they contract COVID-19. Plus, diabetes is the most expensive chronic health condition in the U.S. One in four insulin-dependent people ration their insulin due to financial hardships. The American Diabetes Association says no matter your race, income, zip code, or education level, you should have some basic health rights. Tracy Brown is the CEO of the ADA and is living with diabetes herself. She says COVID-19 and the racial unrest in our country has shined a really bright light on this issue. People really don't understand um, a lot of the, the facts and the stats, which partly is we hope that people become more aware. But awareness is just one piece of this. We want to arm people to, to then take action. For a more detailed look at the Health Equity Bill of Rights and to take action on these 10 items, go to our website, WRTV.com, and click on this story. There we have a breakdown of the Bill of Rights and a link to resources for anyone living with diabetes. More details on the unemployment benefit, benefits, which will impact more than 200,000 Hoosiers who are receiving them. Instead of getting $400 extra dollars every week from the federal government, it will only be $300. And the funding will only cover payments for several weeks, not months. WRTV's Rafael Sanchez spoke with Josh Richardson. He's with the Department of Workforce Development. Who is eligible for these dollars, Josh? And when will they get the money? And so the $300 uh, would get added on top of the weekly benefit amount, again, so long as it's above uh, that $100 amount. Now, but in two to three weeks, we'll start those benefit payments. How long they last is sort of the next relevant question. And, uh, you know, right now, I think that it'll depend on how many states uh, opt into this program. A lot of folks are just frustrated. You know that because your folks, you have hundreds of people answering calls. So how do you respond to the frustration that many Hoosiers are still feeling as they wonder what is going on. You know, what we're really focused on doing is making sure that we take the available federal funds and that we implement them as quickly as possible and try to provide them as accurately as possible to Hoosiers. And, and you know, that's really what we're, what we're limited to do. So I, I do understand there's some frustration. I mean, for us, um, this is as complicated to implement as anything that we had envisioned, you know, prior to it coming out. And so it's going to provide some challenges. But I think we're just trying to stay focused on, on doing the best that we can in a difficult circumstance and provide benefits to eligible Hoosiers. Josh Richardson with the Department of Workforce Development, we thank you so much for explaining what is a complicated issue here on WRTV. Thank you so much. And your payments would be retroactive to August 1st, but you won't see any money until September. By the way, the state's unemployment fund is running out of money. The state will take out a loan to continue making payments. The loan is not uncommon. It's happened before and will not impact your payment. Well, tonight is a big night for Joe Biden, but the question remains, will his campaign benefit from the so-called post-convention bounce? That story coming up next. Tonight is Joe Biden's big night in front of the American people with his acceptance speech on the final night of the Democratic National Convention. It is also the Biden-Harris campaign's best chance to get an increase in the polls before President Trump's convention begins next week. More now from Joe St. George. From the bottom of my heart, thank you all. While at times conventions may look like it's all about the confetti, what Joe Biden and Kamala Harris really want after tonight's Democratic convention finale is what's known as a post-convention bounce, a term that describes an increase in support in the polls. Since 1968, campaigns on average have received a 5% increase following their convention. Maybe uh, opinions are a little bit more 
locked in. Professor Thomas Holbrook at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee predicts, though, a bump will be more difficult this year for Democrats. It's being held relatively late in the calendar year, and President Trump's convention is next week. Not to mention this year's viewership on broadcast networks is down around 50 percent. Experts estimate 7 million fewer Americans are watching on television. There could be fewer persuadable voters. Biden advisors, though, are dismissing the poor television numbers, arguing more people are streaming this convention on laptops and smartphones than ever before, believing a bump in the polls is still possible. Here's Biden advisor Kate Bedingfield. You know, we've really thought about how we can reach people on on non-traditional platforms um, and how we can really make this a dynamic experience. President Trump, though, still has the luxury of going second, and he will next week. Republican officials telling me they've been privately watching the Democrats to get ideas on what worked and what didn't, hoping to get that post-convention bounce for their candidate, who by most polls is trailing. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. The state of Michigan has agreed to a $600 million settlement over the Flint water crisis. Among the defendants in the civil lawsuits, former Michigan Governor Rick Snyder. This comes more than half a decade after lead leaked into residents' drinking water. The impact has been staggering. The settlement will establish a court-monitored victims' compensation fund that will provide direct payments to Flint residents. Nearly 80% of that money will go to those who were under the age of 18 at the time of the crisis. At least two airlines are cutting down on flights as a result of the pandemic. American says it will suspend flights to 15 U.S. airports in October. That translates to about 700 flights. It says travel de demand is too low and Southwest Airlines has already reduced capacity on planes until at least October. It hopes that will entice some people to fly again. Southwest has been cutting nonstop flights where demand is low. But it does sometimes bring flights back when planners see that flights are full. Airbnb does not want users to use their rentals as party houses. The company just announced a worldwide ban on parties and events and has also created an occupancy cap of 16 people. Earlier this year, Airbnb also removed its event-friendly search filter from its site and did not allow hosts to include parties and events allowed as part of their house rules. It's been very comfortable the last couple of days, but that muggy meter, the humidity is about to rise. I'll also detail when that summer heat is going to push the thermometer near 90. You're watching WRTV News at 7. Hey guys, Brad Brown, Dave First here. Uh, looking forward to our WRTV trackside special at the bottom of the hour. A lot to get to. Media day today, which it's just kind of a bunch of talking heads. Really. You know what? So. Everybody I felt was a little more relaxed today. Yeah. Because yeah. it's been a little more low key week with just not a lot going on. There's not a lot, so many events because of the situation everybody's in. But everybody came in here and just kind of really has this, this good feeling going into Sunday. It's going to pick up tomorrow, carb day, final two hours of practice. And of course, the race comes up on Sunday. Our WRTV special, we're going to talk to Tony Kanan about 21. Yeah. He's not done yet. <laughs> uh, and Santino Ferrucci. Yeah, the rookie of the year from last year. I'll tell you what, one of the kind of hot young guns, if you sure. will, from IndyCar. Kid's got a little bit of attitude. He's got a little bit of swagger, though, but he's got the skills to back it up. Be interesting to see what he has coming up next weekend. Jared Andretti remembers his dad, John Andretti, and we're going to make everybody feel old. 35 <laughs> years since Danny Sullivan's spin and win. Has it been that long? We're going to visit with Danny out in Pebble Beach as well. Again, bottom of the hour, 730 WRTV trackside live from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. From Brad Brown, I'm Dave First. And let's take you live out there to the track right now. And you can see that sun going to be setting here. Beautiful evening again across central Indiana as we enjoy those temperatures still in the upper 70s in the Circle City. Feels like 79. The humidity just really not much of a factor at all the way we like it this time of year at 48% with that east breeze around 10 miles per hour. Still in the lower 80s in Lafayette at 81. It's 80 degrees in Bloomington and Muncie coming in at 79 right now. As we go through the next few hours here, we will find those temperatures sliding back. We get into the upper 60s here as we go into the overnight hours and temperatures by tomorrow morning will be down into the lower 50s around Marion at 52. So you might need that jacket just for a little bit. 55 in Lafayette and Frankfurt, 55 as well. And Anderson will find temperatures 
Middle to even some upper 50s along I-70. I think in the city we'll hold on closer to that 60 degree mark. You'll make it to 56 though in Richmond and Rockville, 57 in Martinsville and tomorrow morning starting off in the upper 50s close to 60 in Bedford, Columbus and Seymour. Lots of sunshine again to start off our Friday here and temperatures that will warm to 76 here by late morning. Lunchtime temperature close to 80 degrees at 78. Winds going to be very light. As we go into the afternoon, we'll see a few more clouds in the sky and notice a touch more humidity that will be out there. Still not bad, though, for this time of year as those numbers climb into the 80s. Call for an afternoon high of 85 in Indian Columbus and 86 in Lafayette area. So that's right about where we should be for this time of year. As far as rain chances on Friday, this is Friday evening. You see an increase in clouds from that system that sits off to our southeast. We may see a stray shower here around Bloomington, Greensburg, Columbus areas to the south, but that's only about a 10% chance. On Saturday, a little better chance as we go into the afternoon and evening hours. So we'll see a few of those thunderstorms scattered around. Not a washout by any means here as temperatures will continue their climb into the 80s. In fact, there's a look at TrueCast, 3.30 Saturday afternoon. You can see that rain not taking up a whole lot of real estate here. As we check out the extended forecast for you now, let's go to Sunday and race day. Just that isolated rain chance there. 86 will be the high temperature, and then we take away those rain chances to start off next week. Look at what happens to the temperature. We're going to have those highs around 90 degrees as summer rolls on here Wednesday and Thursday. Stay with us. The news at 7 rolls on after this. The FDA has given the okay for the world's first fully transparent surgical mask. They're made by Clear Mask, an American medical supply company. Traditional surgical masks block mouths, which can sometimes impede effective communication. The company says Clear Mask helps improve that visual communication while still offering a high level of protection. They can even be used in operating rooms. Clear Mask says their masks are especially helpful for people with hearing impairments and during conversations between people who don't speak the same language. If you're like many people, you probably thought the BlackBerry phone was a thing of the past, but hey, it's coming back. BlackBerry has continued to license its brand to phone manufacturers over the years, and now a new licensee, Onward Mobility, has signed on to bring it back. The company says it will debut the BlackBerry sometime next year. They didn't give a lot of details about the new phone, except that it will run on the Android operating system and have 5G connectivity. It will also have top-of-the-line security. No word yet on the price. Firefighters in the UK came to the aid of a police officer who got stuck in his own handcuffs. The fire crew tweeted that they used pedal cutters to free the officer after his cuffs failed. The officer walked himself to the fire station to get help. He actually kept a pretty good attitude about the ordeal and thanked the fire crew. <laughs> Newly discovered lava tubes left over from the evolution of Mars and the moon could provide shelter for astronauts. A new study published in the journal Earth Science Review shows that the tubes on both Mars and the moon could be longer than 25 miles with a diameter of 3,000 feet. That means they could hold the tallest buildings on Earth Researchers say the tubes could provide shelter for future astronauts, protecting them from radiation and unstable temperatures. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Hey, I, are you guys just having a day where things just don't seem to be going well? Could you use a pick-me-up? Well, not to worry. A very special someone is here to give you that boost that you might need right now. Take a look at this. Hey, you. Yes, 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 you. Today is your day. You got this. You're absolutely crushing it at everything you do, from your job to maintaining a social life to pursuing your passion projects. You are killing it. Ignore anyone who tells you otherwise, because you, you're amazing. Only thing. Hey, you. Yes, yes, yes. Today is your day. This 51-second clip of Thor himself, actor Chris Hemsworth, is circulating on social media. No one is sure where that clip is from, but there's some talk that this could be a promotional video for Chris's Netflix movie Extraction, since the Netflix logo flashed briefly on the screen. Gives you the good pick-me-up, right? I know I feel better. All right, that forecast over the next few days, it feels like summer again. Highs near 90. I'm just setting up for my